Did James Caan murder someone? Bullshit. In the realm of shocking headlines, few stories captivate and disturb as deeply as those involving celebrities and serious crimes. <laughs> the question, did James Caan murder someone, strikes a chilling chord, merging the allure of fame with the grim specter of a murder in the building. James Caan, the guy who played Sonny Corleone in The Godfather, had a life that was crazier than any movie script. Oh, shit. From his connections to the mob to his time spent living at the Playboy Mansion, oh, yeah. Khan's personal life was just as captivating as his acting career. Khan was no stranger to violence both on and off the screen. Bullshit. His role as Sonny Corleone in The Godfather cemented his status as a tough guy. Yes. But the actor's real-life experiences were even more intense. Rumored to have mob ties, Bullshit. Khan was no stranger to the darker side of life. Ultimately, James Khan's life was a study in contrast. A talented actor with a penchant for the high life. Oh, yeah. It's a story that is as fascinating as it is cautionary. A reminder that sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. So, let's jump into it. Please shut up. I'll tell you now. I shut up. Go on. This video delves into the background of James Kahn, exploring his life, achievements, and the relationships that have cast long shadows over his legacy. Shut up. It will closely examine the events leading up to the night of Mark Schwartz's death, scrutinizing Khan's actions before and after the incident, as well as Lisa Rowland's allegations against the actor. I never heard so much bullshit in my whole life. James Edmund Khan was born on March 26, 1940, in the Bronx, New York City. He was the son of Sophie and Arthur Kahn, both Jewish immigrants from Bingen am Rhein, Rhineland, Germany. His father worked as a kosher meat dealer, and James was one of three siblings. Raised in Sunnyside, Queens, James Kahn was known as a tough individual from his younger days in the Bronx, where he engaged in boxing and earned the nickname Killer Kahn. Educationally, Kahn's journey began in New York City's public schools, followed by a stint at Michigan State University, oh, yeah. where he initially pursued an interest in football. Despite his athletic aspirations, he did not make the football team, leading him to transfer to Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. It was at Hofstra that Kahn's path took a pivotal turn towards the performing arts. Although he did not complete his degree at Hofstra, his time there was significant as he became classmates with future film industry figures like Francis Ford Coppola and Lainey Kazan. The transformative phase of James' life occurred when he enrolled at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in New York City. Under the tutelage of Sanford Meisner, a renowned acting instructor, James dedicated five years to studying the craft of acting. He famously remarked about his passion for acting, noting that his improvisations often ended in violence, a hint at the intensity he brought to his roles. James Kahn's early career was marked by various roles in television series such as The Untouchables, The Alfred Hitchcock Hour, and Naked City. His film career began to gain traction with roles in movies like Lady in a Cage, 1964, and Red Line 7000, 1965, directed by Howard Hawks. By 1967, Kahn secured a memorable role in El Dorado, starring alongside John Wayne, Big Asshole, and Robert Mitchum. However, it was his portrayal of Santino Sonny Corleone in the 1972 blockbuster The Godfather that cemented his status as a prominent figure in Hollywood. Yes, yes, yes. Throughout his over six decade long career, James Kahn's contributions to the film industry have left an indelible mark on Hollywood and its audiences. His journey from a young man in Queens to a celebrated actor is a testament to his enduring talent and charisma. Lisa Rowland, originally from Austin, Texas, moved to Los Angeles in 1989 at the tender age of 22, fueled by aspirations of achieving stardom. She quickly secured an agent and began to make her mark in the entertainment industry through print work and commercials, and even starred in the cult classics Class of Newcomb High Parts 2 and 3. Her career trajectory seemed promising with a steady flow of auditions. In 1992, Rowland's life took a significant turn when she met James Kahn, affectionately referred to as Jimmy, at a friend's home. At this time, Khan was 52 years old, oh, yeah. a well-established actor known for his iconic role as Sonny Corleone in The Godfather and his recent performance in Misery. Despite his fame, 
Roland was initially unaware of his celebrity status. She recalled, I didn't really know who he was when I met him. Bullshit. He was just Jimmy. He had a Houston livestock show and rodeo belt buckle, and he said he was a rodeo cowboy, which is what I thought he was at first. But of course he wasn't. He was an actor. The relationship between Roland and Khan began casually, with the pair enjoying dinners and time together at his Beverly Hills home and the La Park Hotel, where Khan stayed while his house was under renovation. Roland described Khan as always very charming and nice, and mentioned that they got along great and hung out all the time. She emphasized that there were no initial red flags, indicating a seemingly smooth start to their relationship. However, the dynamic between them would eventually be tested by troubling events. Roland's later revelations about the relationship painted a darker picture, involving allegations of physical threats and career sabotage. The mysterious death of their friend Mark Schwartz in 1993 marked a turning point, leading to a series of chilling incidents that strained and eventually ended their relationship. Roland claimed that Khan's behavior changed drastically after the incident, my ass. including a bizarre moment when he allegedly could not recognize Schwartz's body and threats that escalated to physical violence. Their relationship, spanning from 1992 to 1994, was marked by both public affection and private turmoil, reflecting a complex interplay of personal and external pressures. Despite the initial compatibility, the relationship deteriorated, culminating in Roland filing a physical battery lawsuit, which was settled outside of court for $86,000. On a fateful night in 1993, Mark Allen Schwartz, a 25-year-old from West Hollywood, met a tragic end. The incident occurred outside a Westwood apartment where actor James Kahn was staying. According to Los Angeles police, Schwartz had arrived at the Wilshire Boulevard building in a taxi and discovered he did not have money for the fare. Building employees reported seeing Schwartz last when he entered the elevator in the lobby, presumably to retrieve money to pay the taxi driver. How could you be so stupid? In a desperate attempt to contact Khan, Schwartz knocked on the apartment door but received no response. He then made a perilous decision to climb out onto the fire escape to try and reach the eighth floor apartment balcony from an adjacent fire escape. What a dumb As the story goes, in a desperate attempt to contact Khan, Schwartz knocked on the apartment door but received no response. He then made a perilous decision to climb out onto the fire escape to try and reach the eighth floor apartment balcony from an adjacent fire escape. Tragically, it appears Schwartz lost his footing and fell to his death around 4 a.m. What a fucking idiot. The police were promptly involved following the discovery of Schwartz's body. Detective Vic Pietrantoni and Officer Rigo Romero both described the event as an apparent accident. However, the situation was complex due to the high profile nature of James Kahn being involved. Kahn, who was questioned by the police, explained that he had been asleep during the incident after having turned off his phone to avoid disturbances while reading scripts. <laughs> the police report detailed that Schwartz was a casual acquaintance of Khan, who had visited the apartment briefly earlier that evening. Despite initial suspicions and the dramatic circumstances of being awakened by police with guns drawn, the investigation concluded that Schwartz's death was accidental. This conclusion came after extensive questioning of Khan and other witnesses, combined with the autopsy results confirming the fall as the cause of death. Lisa Rowland, who was with Kahn and Schwartz earlier on the night of the incident, provided additional context. She recounted the events leading up to the tragedy, noting that Schwartz had been drinking earlier in the night, which might have impaired his judgment. Despite the ruling of an accidental death, Rowland expressed lingering doubts and unresolved questions about the sequence of events that led to Schwartz's fatal fall. Following the tragic incident involving Mark Schwartz, James Kahn faced scrutiny not only from the public, but also from law enforcement. I never heard so much bullshit in my whole life. Kahn recounted to the Times a particularly startling morning when police arrived at his door with guns drawn, a scene he described as reminiscent of a Columbo script. He vehemently denied any wrongdoing, emphasizing the absurdity of committing a crime and then simply going back to sleep. Maybe get a little respect, just a little. Khan explained that he had retired to the apartment that night specifically to read scripts in solitude, ensuring no disturbances by turning off his phone. Further complicating the narrative, 
Kahn revealed that Schwartz had been drinking heavily that evening, which led to his decision to take a cab. This detail was confirmed by friends of Schwartz, suggesting that his impaired judgment might have contributed to the fatal decision to attempt accessing Kahn's apartment via the fire escape. The legal aftermath of Schwartz's death saw Kahn entangled not only with police investigations, but also with allegations from his ex-girlfriend, Lisa Rowland. Son of a bitch. Rowland, represented by women's rights attorney Gloria Allred, filed a lawsuit alleging physical battery. The lawsuit, which was settled out of court for $86,000, money, claimed that Kahn had become physically aggressive following the incident. Rowland's allegations extended beyond physical abuse. She accused Khan of threatening her and her family's safety, further alleging that he attempted to silence her from speaking about the case to protect his public image. Not here for I knock the piss out of you. In a broader context, these accusations contributed to a tumultuous period in James's life, marked by legal troubles and public controversy. Despite these challenges, Khan maintained his innocence regarding Schwartz's death, describing the event as a horrible bad luck thing in a statement to Fox News. This period also saw Khan's brief arrest related to an unrelated incident involving brandishing a weapon, though charges were eventually dropped. The series of events following Schwartz's death not only affected him legally, but also impacted his public persona, intertwining his personal struggles with his professional life in a way that captured the attention of both his supporters and detractors. I never heard so much bullshit in my whole life. Lisa Rowland's relationship with James Kahn took a dark turn following the mysterious death of their mutual friend, Mark Schwartz. Rowland claims that Kahn's demeanor shifted drastically after she questioned him about not recognizing Schwartz's body. Bullshit. According to her, Kahn responded flippantly, indicating he was under investigation for murder and did not wish to delve into the incident. This marked the beginning of a series of threats and violent acts that left Rowland living in fear. Roland detailed an alarming incident where Khan allegedly threatened her life and the safety of her family. She recounted that Khan, in a fit of rage, threatened to put a hit on her mother and physically assaulted her. She described him grabbing her by the neck, punching, and strangling her before finally throwing her into the hallway. Bullshit. This abuse, Roland suggested, mirrored the violent end she feared Schwartz might have met. The repercussions of Kahn's alleged threats and abuse had profound and lasting effects on Roland's life and career. After obtaining a restraining order against Kahn, she reported that her house was ransacked, and she experienced other forms of intimidation, including slashed tires and a mugging in Manhattan. Let's be careful on it. These incidents contributed to a pervasive atmosphere of fear that drastically altered her lifestyle. Roland's career suffered significantly, she noticed a stark decline in work opportunities. Previously active with TV gigs and script offers, she found herself isolated professionally. Her agent, focusing solely on her connection to Khan, ceased to provide her with auditions unrelated to the controversy. Bullshit. This professional stagnation lasted for nearly three decades, during which Roland remained largely silent about the abuse, fearing further retaliation. The emotional toll was equally severe. Roland described the entire ordeal as a life-changing event that left her constantly nervous and fearful of speaking out, even long after her mother's death in 2003. The trauma of her experiences with Khan continued to silence her, robbing her of both her voice and peace of mind. The public reaction to James Khan's involvement in the mysterious circumstances surrounding Mark Schwartz's death and subsequent allegations by Lisa Rowland has been mixed. On social media and various public platforms, there has been a noticeable divide between those who remember Khan for his iconic roles and charismatic presence, and those who are critical of his alleged behavior off screen. Not sure I deserve that. The allegations made by Rowland, including threats and physical abuse, have sparked discussions about the treatment of women in Hollywood, especially in the context of the Me Too movement. These discussions suggest a broader societal reckoning with the legacies of beloved figures who are also implicated in serious personal controversies. I never heard so much bullshit in my whole life.
Media coverage of James Caan's life and controversies presents a complex portrait of the actor. Following his passing, numerous outlets published tributes highlighting his career achievements and charismatic personality. Celebrities like Adam Sandler and Al Pacino offered glowing remembrances, emphasizing Khan's talent and influence in the industry. However, alongside these accolades, there have been critical examinations of Khan's behavior, particularly regarding his interactions with women. Articles and reports have pointed out the stark contrast between the public's adoration of Khan's film roles and the darker aspects of his personal life, which include accusations of violence and intimidation. Son of a bitch. James Caan's connections with the mob have long been a subject of intrigue and speculation. His ties to the Colombo crime family came under scrutiny, especially after notorious mobster Sammy the Bull Gravano claimed that Khan was an associate of the family. Those who want respect, give respect. According to Gravano, Khan had to seek permission from Joe Colombo to take on the iconic role of Sonny Corleone in The Godfather. This association was further highlighted when Khan publicly supported Andrew Andy Mush Russo, a known figure in the mob, during his legal troubles. This connection extended to personal relationships, as Russo was the godfather to Khan's son Scott, indicating a deep and personal bond beyond mere acquaintance. Apart from his alleged mob ties, Khan faced several legal controversies throughout his career. In 1994, he was arrested for brandishing a weapon at Derek Lee, a rap artist known as Doc Rapper, during a heated argument. Go ahead, make my day. Although the charges were eventually dropped, this incident added to his reputation as a volatile figure. Additionally, his onset behavior during the filming of The Godfather raised eyebrows. Co-star Gianni Russo recounted an incident where Khan became overly aggressive during a fight scene resulting in Russo sustaining injuries not planned in the choreography. These controversies, combined with his tumultuous personal life and multiple legal encounters, painted a complex picture of Khan's off-screen persona, contrasting sharply with his on-screen roles of charismatic and strong characters. Throughout this examination of James Khan's life, the distinction between the celebrated actor known for iconic roles and the individual embroiled in personal controversies becomes blurred, offering a sobering glimpse into the complexities of fame and human behavior. From his early beginnings in New York to his ascent to Hollywood prominence, Khan's career is a testament to his enduring talent and the impact he had on the film industry. So, in conclusion, these are some heavy accusations. James Khan has always been a controversial figure, known for his intense roles and equally intense off-screen persona. However, the claims regarding Mark Schwartz's death are largely based on Lisa's accounts, and without solid evidence, it's a tough case to crack. Rest in peace, James Kahn. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad station.